Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Hana Monogatari, but today we're going to be checking out episode 2. And last time on episode 1, we started things off now with the Saruga Devil Arc, and well, it was a very, very unique beginning to one of these arcs so far. Notably, one of the first things that happened, as tends to happen in the first episodes of these arcs, is that Suruga ran into Ogi, but she's a little different from when we last saw her. She's a guy now. Although if you asked her, she said that she was always a guy, so... Yeah. And the weird thing is that Suruga barely questioned it. <laughs> she's just like, were you always a guy? And they were like, yeah, I've always been a guy. And then Suruga's like, huh. Oh. I guess so. Just accepted it directly at face value without really digging too deep into that. Weird. As if Ogi was not enigmatic enough, <laughs> they're just gonna be doing that now. But afterward, we had something really interesting that occurred in Suruga's uh, classroom. She was talking to one of her classmates, and then she just casually brought up Araragi briefly, and then all of a sudden, everyone else in the class went into fangirl mode and started swarming and being like, Araragi? You mean THE Araragi? That guy? Because it turns out Araragi's actually kind of popular. Unbeknownst to him. Yeah, Araragi actually has a reputation of being the really cool guy who just goes around helping everybody who asks at his expense. And he just doesn't know that. Because he ignores 99% of the people who are around him at all times. So yeah, his sisters aren't the only ones who get to be famous at their school. Only they're well aware of what people think of them, and they've leaned into that fame, but Araragi has just blanked it out entirely. Fascinating. But yada yada yada, eventually Suruga heard of a supposed Sir Devil who was doing deals with people, just uh, they would tell them their problems, and then the problems would just disappear, with no downsides. So naturally Suruga wants to investigate that, and upon finding out where this Sir Devil is, she finds an old friend of hers, Numachi. They used to be basketball rivals in middle school until, well, Suruga had the monkey hand thing happen and apparently Numachi also got a leg injury that prevented her from playing, so they have a couple things in common. But now Numachi has just been presenting herself as a devil of sorts, just uh, listening to people's problems and then doing nothing. Yeah, she doesn't have to do anything. All she does is listen to what's wrong, and then the problems just sort themselves out because all she's really doing is helping with their anxiety, making them feel like their problems will be resolved, and then when they inevitably end up getting resolved on their own, they attribute it to her. Of course, whenever she comes across a problem that won't just go away on its own, she turns them to the proper authorities, so... Really? She's doing a service. The only real problem with what she's doing is that it's, uh, it's, you know, a self-centered thing. She wants to feel better about her own problems by hearing everybody else's, and there's the fact that she's lying to them, which isn't very cool, but... You can't argue with the end result. Even if the means are not ideal. Also, apparently, where Numachi is hanging out is where the cram school used to be, according to one of you, which is cool. I didn't really catch that, but... Apparently they cleaned the place up and not just a big, vacant lot, for the most part. Hmm, if she just so happened to be picking the cram school as well, there's gotta be something else going on here, right? Also, as was additionally pointed out to me, Kaiki, last arc, said that he met an old acquaintance recently that he had met a few years ago in another city. Apparently, said acquaintance was Numachi. She's an acquaintance? So, okay. Not sure the implications behind that, but interesting. And after the two of them, you know, kind of had a slap, had a grab, and all was said and done, Suruga got to witness firsthand, apparently, how effective this counseling is because her monkey's paw is gone. Well, that's good, right? Hmm. Well, I guess we'll see what awaits us right now. See? Mm-hmm. Just gotta scope it out. Thank you, convenient hair censorship. Doing my work for me.
Mm hmm. Maybe she's got more magic powers than she expected. Ah, therefore, you just needed to stop stressing about it. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, he's gone. Right. Aw, <laughs> Aw, come on. You thought he might have been dead, but no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it couldn't be just because he's left town, because he'd already been gone for a little bit. Well, that was actually a good-looking shot, but... <laughs> and a lot of what's happening in this, in this intro is already pretty obvious. <laughs> Although... Although... Now that I know who you are, some of this might mean a lot more. Were they a bit more than just rivals? It would seem as though. Yeah, it would. <laughs> I mean, look at this right here. <laughs> when things get all edgy and stuff. And I've got some theories, but I'm going to wait and see how this plays out. Hmm. <laughs> There's something interesting about the choice of colors with this one. And the grating noise, I I still don't get that. But dang. Okay, you still gotta keep up appearances though. I gotcha. As we uh, run through the Sakura blooms. It would be, the arm was a bit heavier before. Whoop! Careful, you're gonna actually injure it. Ooh, yep, there it is. I'm sure you've never been happier to be in pain. Did none of those things happen before? It's back! Get all lefty. What did I tell you? Never been happier to feel pain. This is touching. Me too. Oh, hey, boy, Yogi. How you doing? <laughs> this is weird. Whoa, jeez! I know you used to be a girl, but come on. Oh, that's right, shoot. <laughs> Pick up on that. Hmm, yeah, the bike. Ah, oh, we're on the overtime course. Really? That's weird. P 
perhaps both. But she's uh, not taking any orders right now. Sure they can. You would know. <laughs> What's with the Tetris? Yeah, some people can find a way. Okay, that's a bit more accurate, but... Poison Swamp? That's a bit excessive. And they called her Poison Swamp. <laughs> Wait, she left middle school and went to a sports scholarship? Wait, no, no, no. Okay, I see. And yet she is. To ask to them? I don't think it's how you say that. Oh. Uh, thanks for the help. Oh! Wait, hello! Kaiki! What the frick are you doing here? How the frick are you doing here? I saw- I watched you die! That would have been before this, yes? I see you've grown a nice beard, though. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, let's, be, let's face it. If his ghost was going to show up after anybody, it would be her. Nope, has got to give you the old blockeroo that we've seen many a time. How do you freaking do that? There's no way you could be running that fast, man. That's why I keep doing the old Tokyo Ghoul slash Undertale thing. Oh, well, I'm sure there's an excuse. He could be a ghost. <laughs> you cannot run a ghost. Whoa. <laughs> He's picking her up like a freaking little kid. Yeah, they weren't the only ones. <laughs> One might call this just a... a faded encounter. Yeah, hence why he did exactly that. Normally I would say you can't trust him, but when it comes to you, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, 
We've already ran into that one. Exactly. Both occur. Then why can't we just talk right here? Ah, yes, crowded. I guess we're just ignoring the people who are here. Yes, this is a very special treat. Yeah, that's what he said. Hmm, yes. Very generous today. This man is so good at lying, even his own death was deceitful. At least that's how I'm looking at it right now. Looks good. I actually wouldn't know. Well, dying can change a man. That's not always true. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> he was. That's how I was feeling. I was like, stop making me like you, Kaiki, but it works anyway. Call her Saruga. And that's what I call her. There you go. I hope so. That's what I've been doing. It doesn't have to be, but it's better that way, right? <laughs> that was not okay. <laughs> I knew exactly what that was. But... There is no direct translation for that anyway. Doesn't always pass genetically. Even if she was left-handed, she'd stopped using it for quite a while. Guess he's needed to eat first. Sure did. Did she? She should have. Hmm, guess not. Right, so you did, but you didn't. Before her untimely demise. No kidding.
Well, I've done a bang-up job of that. <laughs> Unless you're lying. That's not true. Yeah, I remember when you showed up. <laughs> right when our Ragi happened to be around. That would be a yes. I'm not saying it was romance, I'm saying you were in love. You may not have been in a relationship with her, but... <laughs> You've got his number, man. That thing's getting charred. Maybe a little rough on occasion, but you're saying that's what stopped you? In what way? Yes. <laughs> His priorities lied elsewhere. I mean, it got a little scraped up. <laughs> Ghostbuster, yep. I doubt it. No, this ain't like that. Mm hmm. Of course, of course. She trusts them. I mean, she can hate you for what you, you know, did to them, supposedly, but... Also, just because you don't hate her doesn't mean she can't hate you. No, this is an anime at the moment. <laughs> okay? You okay? I feel like you're preaching at me right now more than anything. I get it. <laughs> But you're also talking about her. Hmm. Occasionally, you've been known to. And he'll teleport right in there. Yeah, you you con to God, you can con anybody, man. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Why? Stop telling her what to do. I mean, you do need proteins and stuff in order to become an athlete. 
Well, he knows about that one. <laughs> and good job shielding her from that. But you didn't know she was dead. Ah, I've heard of such individuals. <laughs> They're trying to build a Frankenstein's devil? Just hand it over to him. Just let him take it. <laughs> I mean, you don't need it anymore. You never did. No other hands, just that one. <laughs> Probably not. Hope you left a good tip. Since when are you so meat obsessed? <laughs> that, that only happened once. Ghost brain. Friend. Unless you mean Ogi or something. <laughs> Why would Ogi want to talk to you? Ah, Numachi. That was my third guess. <laughs> yeah, Numachi tipped him off? How did Numachi know that you were going there? <laughs> you were going there to look for her. How did she know you were coming? And well, we already know that uh, Numachi and Kaiki have an association. So it's no wonder that she would... She would reach out to him, given the circumstance, but... Okay, let me just make something clear here. This arc was, uh, uh in release order-wise, it was before the the arc we just saw. So it, then, if you just saw Kaiki in here like this, you wouldn't even suspect for a second that he might be dead, but... They've said this takes place post-graduation. Hence... We witnessed Kaiki get bludgeoned by that one dude already. Unless I'm missing something here. But, <laughs> and, and just the fact that he would be sporting the fashionable uh, beard combo here would imply that time has passed, but... Hmm. Maybe he was just being exaggerative. <laughs> Maybe he didn't die, but was just got just got beaten up and left to die, but then managed to survive anyway. Who knows? I don't. Hello. Post credits. I don't know. It's a solid feeling. She's being censored by her own reflection right now. Now that's interesting. You got me. We've gotten two scenes like this this episode. No need. Of course. You can always count on one of the Fire Sisters. Called that. Mm. Dang, 
was just about to say she was wearing a bathrobe earlier, but <laughs> had to take it off to sit outside. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Kaiki's back. Eh, I can safely say I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> For a number of reasons. But Numachi tipped him off that Suruga would be coming into the town, so he met her at the station. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, my main going theory right now is just that Kaiki was being dramatic. <laughs> and that he, in fact, did not bleed to death out there in the snow or nothing, and that he just survived. And his death was only assumed because he was talking about stuff like, Oh, I hope you can- I hope I can use this money in hell. And could you blame him for thinking that he was dead? I'd think I was dead. I don't know how he could have survived. But uh, he seems to have recovered quite nicely, given his frickin' sprinting speed. The dude's a monster. Although in all fairness, Saruga was a little off balance at the time. I'm sure she can't run at full speed. So there's that. Yeah, he's got the nice goatee beard thing going on. And he's decided to offer some advice to Saruga that apparently a collector is coming in because they want to assemble the parts to create a devil and they need her monkey hand. And when they show up, just just give it to them. Don't put up a fight. I mean, would we want this individual assembling a devil? Probably not, but yeah, if Kaki says to do it, I guess just go with it. But still, his survival has given us one good opportunity. He got to meet Saruga, because up until now, he had never gotten the chance. He showed up as a secondary task to just check up on her, but he never even looked at her. But here they got to have a nice conversation, and we got to see a bit of the sharpness of Suruga's mind. She was able to read exactly what his deal was involving her mom, that he was in love with her previously, but he never jumped on that, because he said it was because he had a, a girlfriend at the time, which, you know what, that's fair enough. And that apparently Suruga's mom said to him that should something happen to her, that he should protect Saruga, but he didn't hear about her death until, you know, recently, supposedly it was uh, earlier last year when he learned about it, and then he <laughs> he just so happened to have business in town, and then him going there to check on it was a secondary meaning. Probably not. <laughs> Knowing him, that was probably the primary, and what, he was, what business he had was the secondary. He said it himself in that there's a lot more to him than meets the eye. And he's gone out of his way to help people purely for the sake of Suruga before, so I would have been shocked if that wasn't his main motivation. And Suruga being constantly distrusting of Kaiki makes perfect sense, obviously, because it was Araragi and Senji Kahara who told her not to trust him, and, and from their point of view, of course, they had good reason to not trust him, and... Of course, you would want to tell her to just book it the second you saw him, but they had no idea that he would never go out of his way to do anything bad to Saruga. It was it's quite the opposite, really. Now, anybody else, sure, if you see him run away, but with Saruga, nah. But as we were left off, the hunt is on for Numachi. Saruga has enlisted the help of Karen to find out where she is in town, and I think the two of them can handle it, you know? The Fire Sisters... If they're good at anything, it's this. I think they can handle just, you know, trying to find somebody in town. I mean, their failure at facing down Kaiki is understandable. But this, this should be no big deal at all. She's definitely going to have some questions for her. <laughs> Numachi knows a lot more than she's letting on about, apparently. And I can't wait to find out <laughs> just what that stuff is. But for now... I think that's all I got to say, guys, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe to be updated on more. That would be great. Next time, episode 3, part 3 of this Suruga Devil arc. Maybe it's going to involve the Collector showing up. Maybe not. We don't know when that guy's going to come in. But when they do, we'll see. Also, I just want to mention it this time. Oki had a very brief scene. Mostly just discussing why Sir Devil stopped doing what they were doing. And I wonder that too. What was it about their encounter that made her want to stop? Because she seemed adamant that what she was doing was right, even if Suruga was trying to tell her it wasn't. So, why abandon ship? 
I guess it's just something we're gonna have to wait and see about, like a lot of this, but overall, I'd say this was an interesting episode. Caught me off guard seeing our boy Kaiki again. Would have never thought that he might have survived, or maybe he didn't. <laughs> Who knows? You never freaking know with this. He could be a ghost or something, but I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on not ghost because that wouldn't make a lot of sense because, yeah, I, I don't know. He's been, he's been interacting with a few normal people so far, so... Hmm, gonna, just gonna think that he survived. I mean, they never showed him die. There was just imagery that might indicate that he died and with his own words, but as we know, his words are not always 100% trustworthy. But as I said, that's it. So till we meet again, I will see you guys all later.